FIE TV, Evansville. From Channel 14 News, this is News Watch. Good evening, I'm David Jane. And I'm Ann Comis. Frank McCluskey, the man who won re-election to Congress by just four votes, is now considering a run for the U.S. Senate. And if he does that, then Evansville Mayor Mike Vandeveer may go after McCluskey's job in the House. It's the medical condition of this man which has caused all this speculation today. State Senator Lewis Mahern has withdrawn from the campaign for Dan Quayle's Senate seat because of a heart attack Mahern suffered last week in Indianapolis. That's where Frank McCluskey comes into the story. There's no announced candidate now, Democratic challenger for Quayle. So McCluskey says he is interested. He announced today in Washington he'll make a final decision by early December. Eileen Clary reports. State Democratic Chairman John Livengood came here to find out which congressman might be willing to test the waters for the 86th Senate race. While two state Democrats are expressing interest in that race, it was Representative Frank McCloskey sounding the most like a candidate. I am uh, seriously considering uh, filing for U.S. Senate. I have not uh, finally and absolutely made up my mind by, by any means, but I'm, I'm very interested. McCloskey sounds more than just interested. He He's already planning a statewide poll and will announce his intentions by early December. The congressman is also testing the waters in some circles. My wife is very, uh, uh, very, very supportive of the idea. If I do that, I'll, I'll be quite candid. She did not recommend it. Uh, I have uh, friends that think it's a great idea and, and, and friends who, uh, who, who think that uh, uh, perhaps Frank let check into a psychiatrist. But also not ruling the race out is Representative well, Phil Sharp. But Sharp may not commit until he finds out what the state legislature plans to do with the boundaries of his district. If changes are made that don't favor his re-election, a Senate race might look more attractive. Well, they can make it less appealing for me to run for the House, obviously. <laughs> That's, uh, which has been their goal in the past, and they've not been successful in it. This meeting did produce one firm commitment, Democrats say there won't be a sharp McCloskey primary. If a congressman runs, it will be one of the two, not both. Eileen Cleary, Newswatch 14 on Capitol Hill. And now from Capitol Hill to City Hall in Evansville, and all this may play a role in the political future of Mayor Vandeveer. That's right. You have to get your fingers out for this one, David. Right. Because Congressman McCluskey may run for senator, so that leaves his 8th district spot open, and the mayor says he's interested in that spot. Ironically, it was just earlier this month that Mayor Vandeveer said he was not interested in running for any office other than Mayor of Evansville. Well, now he's apparently changed his mind, as Derek Wilkerson reports. Evansville Mayor Mike Vandeveer, currently serving his second term, says he may be interested in a congressional seat if it's in the cards. If, if uh, Congressman McCloskey decides to run for the Senate, then I would be interested in looking at that seat. But uh, again, that right now is, is quite hypothetical. Meanwhile, the mayor says McCluskey would be a good candidate for the Senate. But if McCluskey expects to be a strong contender, a decision needs to be made soon. You have the logistics of a campaign to put together at this point. You've got to get organized. Um, uh, there's no escaping the fact that you've got to raise lots of money. And uh, so fundraising becomes an important part of the whole process. Vanderveer says he's anxious to know what McCluskey decides because his own political future hinges on that answer. Derek Wilkerson, Newswatch 14. Other news today? Well, it didn't come as a complete surprise, but the effect is still just as devastating for 525 workers and their families. Green River Steel in Owensboro is closing its doors for good on November 30th, a victim of foreign competition. Tim Golden reports. Shift change at Owensboro's Green River Steel Plant. Today with the atmosphere of the workers matching that of the weather, overcast and gloomy. Workers here have learned over the years to live with layoffs due to the volatile steel industry, but that still didn't prepare them for yesterday's announced closing of the Owensboro Steel Mill. I think for the past year, you kind of felt it coming, but you refused to believe it. And uh, you really always think that something will happen and keep thinking that surely they're not going to let 525 people go in for it, but that's, that's what's 
plant. For months, the union and company have been negotiating in hopes of keeping the plant open. But even concessions made by the union failed to bring the Owensboro plant in line with cheaper foreign competition. The concessions consisted of, of job combinations, uh, reduction in, uh, in pay, um, cost-saving factors with the company and working procedures. Green River Steel is one of Davis County's major employers, including having one of the highest wage scales. For Mike and Donna Lee, the closing of the plant will mean a leaner Christmas for their four children. But in some respects, the announcement eased the burden for them as well. I think it looks better for the future, really, if he can find another job. We've been expecting this and wanting it to hurry up and happen so we can just go on. Ironically, today, the Owensboro Chamber of Commerce also released this economic survey, which shows what everyone else has been suspecting for years. The manufacturing is indeed on the decline in Davis County. But the report also shows a strengthening in the retail and service industries of Owensboro. And chamber officials hope that those two industries may be able to absorb at least part of the loss of 525 jobs at Green River Steel. From Owensboro, Tim Golden, Newswatch 14. A verdict of guilty has been reached in the murder retrial of James Gibson. A jury impaneled in Knox County returned the verdict a short time ago after deliberating two hours. Gibson was accused of molesting and murdering the two-and-a-half-year-old daughter of his former girlfriend. The jury was given this question, did the child die of a staph infection or as the result of beatings? With more on the verdict, let's go live now to Scott Hicken at the courts building. Scott. David, it did take a Knox County jury less than two hours to convict James Gibson of murder and misdemeanor battery on one of two counts of child molesting. The jury found Gibson not guilty on the other child molesting count. In the closing arguments today, the lawyers did concentrate on why Jolie Taylor died and who should be held responsible. After the verdict, I talked to a juror, and he said Gibson's third statement played a major role in their decision. In that statement, Gibson said he beat Jolie repeatedly in the weeks before she went to the hospital. Gibson's attorney, Terry White, says he thought that statement was a key as well, and he will appeal the case. Deputy Prosecutor Doug Knight says he is pleased with the verdict. Gibson faces a maximum of 60 years in jail for his murder conviction. That sentencing is November 21st. David? Now, Scott, I understand that Gibson never took the stand in his own defense. Any idea of why he didn't, and did that hurt his case? Well, uh, Attorney White says that uh, he just wanted to change his strategy, and he wasn't too pleased with the way Gibson testified in his first trial. And besides, if he did not let Gibson take the stand, then Knight could not question him about his testimony in the first trial. So he just wanted to keep all testimony away from the first trial and letting that getting in, admitted into evidence in the second trial. All right, thank you, Scott. And again, repeating the verdict was guilty. We might also uh, remind you that that retrial was uh, uh, needed because of a mistrial in July. That's when a 13th, uh, the alternate juror, was allowed in the deliberations. That did not happen this afternoon. Sus suspended Vandenberg County Jailer Larry Weatherford got a chance to tell his side of the story today to a grand jury. He and his attorney spent two hours before the panel, which is looking into possible additional criminal charges against Weatherford. The jailer is already accused of armed robbery and criminal confinement after allegedly robbing two men outside the club paradise. Prosecutor Bob Pigman said he expects a decision tomorrow on any additional charges. There's been no discussion on what those charges might be. And if the panel indicts Weatherford, the charges won't be made public until Attorney Canada returns from a short vacation on Monday. The grand jury probe came to an end today after hearing from more than 60 witnesses. Fire this afternoon leveled a rural Henderson County home. Volunteers from the Cairo Fire Department were first called to the scene on Pruitt Agnew Road about noon. When they arrived, they found the home of a fellow firefighter, Jeff Propus, engulfed in flames. He noticed that there was some smoke coming out around the chimney, so he climbed up in the attic to check it out, and when he got up there, well, it was uh, completely, uh, the attic was completely engulfed in flames at the time. And, uh, we had two men, two firemen to enter from the inside with air packs and uh, hose, and they uh, had it knocked down, but the uh, flames were so hot and heavy above them, uh, they couldn't control them. It finally took those firefighters better than 30 minutes to put the blaze out and no other property was damaged in the fire, and fortunately, no one was hurt. Ahead on Newswatch, our missing children report. And we'll update the numbers game at the post office. The nine-digit zip, is it working?
was the time my dieting led to meals with only two sliced bread. It left me feeling hot. By National City Bank, the performance bank. It is a gross misconception that children who are abducted by a non-custodial parent are not endangered. The truth is most suffer psycholi uh, psychologically as well as physically. Some have even been murdered by their own parents. If you know of a child in this situation, help him by calling the Missing Children Network. The Marshak brothers were taken from their mother in Cheshire, Connecticut, August 6th of this year. Ten-year-old Eric Marshak has blonde hair and blue eyes. Six-year-old Joshua Marshak has dark blonde hair and blue eyes. Joshua has rapid eye movement and wears bifocal glasses. He also has a half-inch scar over his left eye. Daniel Marshak is five years old. He has dark blonde hair, blue eyes, and a fading red birthmark on his chest. And baby brother Avi Marshak is two years old with blonde hair, blue eyes. He is still wearing diapers. If you know the whereabouts of Eric, Joshua, Daniel, Avi, or any missing child, please call the Missing Children Network. And a new step, David, taken in the missing children's search. That's right. The Vandenberg County Sheriff's Department has organized a posse of volunteers. And already some 50 officers have volunteered their time to assist in the search for missing children. And Mead Johnson has donated 50 bright colored vests to help identify this new search team. Dispatcher emergency number. These decals of the team needs to be... The purpose of it is if we are out in the field looking for a child and should a neighbor or a friend or someone in the neighborhood have some information to give to us, if they see one of these vests, they will know that it's a search team and they can approach one of the officers and give them the information, which can be relayed to uh, Officer Duckworth and then get back and put on the air. So it'll be a highly visible thing to uh, identify us as a search team. The Sheriff's Child Search Hotline number is 426-5322. A reward fund is also being set up for those who have information about our missing children. A celebration the community was glad to commemorate today, the 50th anniversary of the Indiana Crippled Children's Services, 50 years of local service. The celebration took place at Deaconess Hospital with cake and punch for some 260 children the service has helped throughout the years. It all started back in 1935, and the Evansville Clinic was open in 1947. We take children from 0 to 21 who live in Indiana and who need some help with care for medical care for special conditions. Those special conditions are things like uh, congenital defects, uh, club feet, um, cystic fibrosis, uh, congenital heart defects, orthopedic problems, neurological problems, uh, some kind of a, a condition that really requires a lot of care and specialized care. It's very special care. The clinic in Evansville is supported by taxes from both the county and the state. The idea of remembering a nine-digit zip code was a big turnoff for the public, but now, three years later, the Postal Service says more and more people are using it and saving money. Dan Ballard has that. Zip Plus 4 was first introduced to the public in 1982. It is a voluntary program that, with the use of computers, can sort mail quicker and at less cost. Zip Plus 4 is designed to enable computers to make decisions on sorting mail and the additional four digits of the zip code uh, enable the computer to do that. Jackson says the zip plus four concept is geared more toward the businesses with large quantities of mail, but small businesses and the private sector can also benefit. There are discounts available for mailers who convert to the zip plus four program, and so certainly for a larger volume mailer, uh, they'll be able to reduce their postage costs uh, perhaps more than a smaller volume mailer. However, on a percentage basis, uh, the discount uh, is important even to a small uh, mailer. The numbers are smaller, but then perhaps they're spending less money. Four Evansville businesses have converted to Zip Plus Four. One of those, National City Bank, has saved two to three thousand dollars in ten months of use. So we can pass this uh, savings on to our customers, so we won't have this increase in fees and so forth. Uh, the other thing we, we uh, decided to do this because of the uh, uh, speeding up the mailing process for the post office uh, it saves us money. It gets the uh, uh, the mail to the customer in a quicker manner and hopefully more accurate manner. Jackson says all four businesses using a nine-digit zip have seen positive results and hopes others will join the ranks. Dan Ballard, Newswatch 14. Our weather is coming up next, Ann, and it looks like uh, mail carriers and trick-or-treaters will be getting wet tomorrow.
speaking of Halloween on Health Watch, we'll give you some last minute tips on making Halloween a safe one for your kids. Where will you find low grocery prices every day? Great. Soon. So hurry in and save on Lee's beautiful carpets. Available now at special savings from Moit Carpet, Henderson, and Newburgh. Good evening. Two days of rain and counting, and it looks like maybe three or four more. That's the bad news. Right now in Evansville, we do have some light rain falling, and our temperature is 51 degrees both at the airport and downtown. The dew point is at 50. The barometer is holding steady. The wind's out of the northeast still at 13 miles an hour, and the humidity way up there, as you might expect. Our high temperature today, not much different than, it was, than our present temperature, 52 degrees below 49. Really not much change there. 72 hundredths at the airport and inch downtown of rain. So far, this storm has given us just about three inches of rain since it started late Monday night. Now, temperatures around the area are all pretty steady. 49 in Vincennes, 50 in Princeton, 53 in Boonville, 50 in Jasper, 48 in Tell City. Down in Madisonville, they're reporting in with 52 degrees, 50 in both Owensboro and Fairfield, and 49 degrees in Mount Carmel at this hour. Here is the latest satellite photo, and you can see all the cloud cover associated with Tropical Storm 1. It is spreading throughout western Kentucky, southern Illinois, and southern Indiana, really up into the New England states. On a close-up picture, you can see the defined uh, clouds, basically lighter clouds in our area, so that's why we had mostly light rain today, not near as much as we had uh, the last night and early this morning. The center of Juan right now is over Marsh Island along the coast. It's not weakening and it's not going anywhere, so expect it to bring us some rain for a while. Now on the local radar, there is some rain showing up, but it has decreased in the last hour or so, most of it falling in Warwick County, Gibson County, and some in southern Illinois. On the national scene, you can see that there is a lot of rain associated with this, spreading throughout our area and down into Florida, mostly heavy showers taking place down there. On the national map, you can see that the uh, Hurricane Juan is causing the rainfall throughout here. This high pressure system, however, is bringing some seasonal temperatures to the west of us, and that hopefully will help us later in the weekend, but right now it's kind of doubtful. We're just praying. This well, this uh, cold front here could move our way by the weekend, and that could spell bad news for the weekend. As far as Halloween goes, well, it doesn't look very good right now for our area. The Halloween forecast calls for rain throughout the tri-state area. Not near as heavy as we've had the past few days, though, probably mostly light rain. We'll get to our forecast when we come back. Twas the night before Christmas at Angie's Arbor Hill House. Not a creature was stirring except Tootie Tittlemouse. And these choices at a difficult time. This is the gift she's expecting, but this gift shows how much I care. For a pre-arrangement conference without obligation, call Alexander Funeral Homes, worthy of your trust. Knock this battery off my... Better warranty at a better price anywhere. Didn't hurt. Yeah. Get to Napa. Get the power and put punch back into your starting system. <laughs> Take a turn for excitement on the Wheel of Fortune weeknights at 6.30, only on 14. Well, I could just say rain, but we will go through the forecast. For tonight, here's how it looks. Cloudy and cold with intermittent rain or drizzle, a low around 48 degrees. Now, tomorrow, here is our Halloween forecast. Bone-chilling rain. So dress trick-or-treaters warm and waterproof are high around 55, 56 degrees with winds out of the northeast. On Halloween night, Hopefully all the ghouls will stay indoors, but the ghostly cool weather will affect them with bewitching rain, a low around 52. And then a look ahead is not good either. An 80% chance of rain on Friday. Saturday and Sunday, it will begin to turn colder with intermittent rain both days. The highs will be around 50, and the lows will be around 40 degrees. If you would like more information on tonight's Health Watch, please call 479-4363. Health officials throughout the country today are throwing cold water on that reported AIDS breakthrough. Leading researchers say the announcement from Paris yesterday is irresponsible and premature. American doctors say they're surprised the announcement came after a week of study on only six patients. U.S. manufacturers of that drug, cyclosporin, say it will be tested now against the disease. When we return on Health Watch, even your trick-or-treaters need some protection from the spookiness of Halloween. St. Mary's presents some baby talk. This little piggy went to market. Faces are loaded. A hundred years. 
In making your child's costume, look for fire retardant labels, whether they be ready-made costumes or one you've made yourself. Design them so children can walk easily without tripping. And speaking of tripping, make sure they can wear comfortable and well-fitting shoes. And also on those costumes, use light colors or decorate them with reflective tape so the trick-or-treaters can be seen after dark. Even their shopping bags can be designed with reflective tape on them. You can even use face makeup instead of masks so children can see very easily. The same can be said for choosing wigs and beards. Make sure they don't obscure the child's vision. And flashlights certainly help children see and be seen more clearly. They're also preferable to candles and jack-o'-lanterns for safety reasons. Make their knives, swords, and other sharp accessories from cardboard instead of giving kids metal or plastic ones. And most of all, make sure that you examine all edibles your children bring home. Aren't that cute? Trick-or-treaters will be getting lots of help this year. Local police agencies have started their own program to patrol with the kids to watch out for candy tampers. And the hospitals are once again this year offering to x-ray candy for foreign objects. David? Thank you, Ann. A racetrack has been sold. Yes, Audubon sold. We'll tell you about that and more. Soccer coming up in a moment. Officials at Henderson's Audubon Raceway have announced that the track has been sold. The new owner is Belfield Standard Brand of Ohio, who today finalized the purchase from the previous owner, Yankee Racing of New Hampshire. Audubon General Manager Nick Sleekin says the new owners are horse people and will make a good impact on the harness racing industry in this area. Terms of the sale were not released. Now, coming off a sensational spring meet, Audubon will go to the post for its annual fall meet beginning on Friday night. University of Southern Indiana is off to a good start in the annual Great Lakes Valley Conference Soccer Tournament, a tournament which they've won five straight times. For the second time in a week, USI in white played host to Northern Kentucky and for a second time was victorious, with Mike Corday scoring two goals and Craig Kriska having two assists. The Eagles, under Mike Farrell, defeated Northern Kentucky by the score of 2-1. to one. Top seeded in the South region, USI is now 9-9 nine and, nine and will play either IU Purdue Fort Wayne or Indiana Central on Friday. In another Great Lakes Valley tournament opening round game, Kentucky Wesleyan beat Bellerman. Two goals by Chris Iverson and Jens Oostergaard. Wesleyan will now play top seed Lewis from the north on Friday. Those games will again be at Kentucky Wesleyan. You know, when it comes to high school soccer, few schools can boast the tremendous or match the tremendous success of Evansville Memorial. Once again, the Tigers are going to state. Mark Howard reports. It's time for our annual fall rerun. The title of this show is the Memorial Boys Soccer Team Goes to State. This show always has a happy ending. Having won two titles in a row and five in the past six years, the Tigers head to the final four Friday with a chance to take another. Obviously, something very special has been building at Memorial. Uh, the dedication and, you know, we all want to win and we have a good program going and we just want to keep it going. We have a bunch of guys that come out here every day and work hard and we've been playing soccer our lives, so we know what to do and we do it. You've got Yankee pinstripes, Boston Celtic green, and locally Memorial white and blue. The tradition of the Tigers' victorious past helps them in the present. One, it psychs out the other team just because they're playing Memorial. And number two, it gives us more motive to win because we're expected to. Don't feel bad about not noticing these kids. Not a lot of people have. This dynasty is the best kept secret in tri-state area sports. It's sometimes frustrating, but on the other hand, the boys are learning all the time. We feel we're doing a good job. They're enjoying it. Their soccer is progressing. And ultimately, the soccer as a program in the town and outside of the town will also progress. They say the first time is always the sweetest, but hitting the championship trifecta would have significant meaning. Everybody didn't even think we'd get out of the city and then go up to state and win it. That'd just be great. These guys are ready. They're ready every year. In fact, I think they look forward to it too much during the rest of the season. I mean, another party. Mark Howard, Newswatch 14 Sports. Back with more in just a moment.
Tonight, play Wheel of Fortune at home and win fabulous prizes from these terrific sponsors. Just watch Wheel of Fortune weeknights at 6.30 following Newswatch and play along with the Wheel Deal game. Be the first to call in and solve the puzzle and you'll be the winner. Tonight, it's Wheel Deal Winter Card Night. You must have a Great Scott Winter Card to win. Tonight's winner will receive a year's supply of Chesty Potato Chips in 16-ounce bags. Remember to pick up your winter card each week at Great Scott and play the Wheel Deal game. Tonight with WFIE-TV Channel 14. People have trusted. It has helped secure the future for many and helped others to start over again. For countless families, it is shelter from the unexpected because they know it will be there when they need it most. It stands for affordable protection and service for your life, health, home, and car. It's the symbol of a strong, growing company and its family of agents. It's the shield of shelter insurance where personal service will always be a matter of personal pride. A few quick reasons why Bonanza's Fresh Tastics Food Bar is better than ever. Fresh vegetables, lettuce, sliced tomatoes, onions, mushrooms, cucumbers, delicious fruit, pineapple, melon, cheese, wonderful desserts, chocolate pudding, fruit salad, deli salads, do-it-yourself salads, hearty soup, piping hot breads. And that isn't all. Now Bonanza has added creamy soft serve dessert to the Fresh Tastics Food Bar, free with any dinner. Discover Bonanza's Fresh Tastics now with soft serve dessert. Highlighting NBA news, the Chicago Bulls in an unfamiliar spot. They're still on top. Three games into the season, they won again tonight. What's interesting about last night was the fact that star Michael Jordan was injured early in the game. As we pick it up midway through the second quarter, Kyle Macy with a court-length pass to Jordan who turns his ankle here. Now, Jordan had 12 points, but it was a 111-105 to victory as they beat Golden State. They're 3-0 on the young season. On the subject of basketball, a Halloween special tomorrow night at Robert Stadium. In addition to judging a contest, David, that they've, uh, I'm in, there will be, there will be a uh, Aces scrimmage tomorrow night, 7-15, the women at 6-15 at the stadium. That's it. I love that uh, soccer player's uh, incentive for winning the state championship. <laughs> Honesty. Another party. I love that. <laughs> Good night. Good night, everyone. News Watch, tonight at 10.